Welcome to my 2021 college football season preview of the MAC Conference. A really weird season last year for all conferences, but especially the MAC. Didn't look like they were going to have football, brought it back at the last second, decided to play a conference only slate, at least for the regular season. Uh, had a re and, and then it, it got more surprising from there with MAC teams uh, having, to having to really struggle to get ready for a season that they thought was over, uh, reduced practice schedule. And I think that really helped with certain teams and hurt others. We saw huge blowouts throughout the season last year for the MAC. And surprisingly, Ball State, who'd gone five. Five and seven in 2019 won the conference. Showed that it wasn't just a fluke that they could that wasn't just a team that could win in conference. Went out and beat an excellent team for the Mountain West, San Jose State. Of course, San Jose State only win over Boise State in the Mountain West Championship game. Really, um, a, a weird season. Hard to analyze for uh, coming into this season. I've said this in all my videos. This, of course, being uh, part of my series where I go through and I preview all 10 co FBS conferences plus the independents. I've said this in all my videos that this is the hardest college football season to analyze and that is especially true for the MAC because the way things turned out last year, it's hard to tell were teams who had good seasons last year, are those teams good now or is that a fluke last year? I think COVID helped a lot of the lower end teams be more competitive because the reduced practice schedules I think hurt a lot of good teams uh, by reducing their ability. It, it's kind of like when you have a fine tuned machine, you know, like like, like a really nice uh, a really nice automobile, um, and you throw a uh, you throw a rock into the gear shaft there, or into the I don't know cars very well, but you throw you throw a rock into the engine of a really nice automobile, it's going to really screw them up. Whereas if you throw a rock into say an old you know, Ford truck from the 1960s, it's not going to affect them as much. And I think we really saw that last season with the really good teams getting kind of brought down a peg, which made it more competitive, allowed teams like Ball State, who has not been as competitive in the MAC in past seasons, to uh, come out of nowhere highly motivated, come down the stretch and win that MAC championship game, and of course, that win against San Jose State. So, hard season to preview for the MAC here. I'm going to do my best. Um, of all the conferences, I think I might be the most off on this one just because you had teams in this conference um, that played uh, uh, you know five or four games and you know Bowling Green here only playing five games and then you had and uh, Kent State only playing four and then you had game teams in this conference Miami and Ohio only playing three so same for Ohio and then you had teams in this conference who went out and played six or seven games or more uh, and no no comparison besides the bowl season which most of these MAC teams didn't have bowl seasons so no comparison outside of the conference and you just kind of have to go okay were teams winning because they were beating each other up and they're not really that good or were they or were those teams that were beating up actually pretty good we just didn't get to see it compared to the rest of the uh, NCAA football so I'm going to give my best shot here previewing the MAC um, and I I hope that I'm going to be uh, right overall. I've been doing this uh, every year. I've gone through the Athlon Sports Magazine. Uh, I've previewed the, in my in my own time but for myself. I've gone through and I predicted the records overall and then gone back and checked myself. And every year I've been better than what Athlon Sports predicts. So I figured it was about time to put it up on the channel. So let's get in here. I'm excited. I hope that I'm going to be as consistent, uh, consistent as I have been in years past. Uh, but like I said, Mac, a challenging one to preview. I think we are going to see a lot of exciting football coming out of the Mac. Uh, the games that I watched last year for the Mac, and I watched a lot of them. Were very fun to watch, uh, especially since they played a lot of those games uh, during the you know during the week. Uh, or allowed allowed kind of themselves to have a spotlight shown on them, and really got a chance to watch some uh, fun Mac football, which always has been fun. The Mac often playing during the weekdays like that. So I think we're going to see a lot of great quarterback play coming out of the MAC. Has been kind of an air raid heavy offense in the past. Get to see a lot of exciting play there. Um, defenses were not the friends of most MAC teams last season. We'll have to see if that changes. But we'll get right into the preview. I'm already four minutes in. I haven't even started previewing yet. So let's get right in here with Akron Zips. Uh, one about Zip last year and about Zip the year and actually Zip the year before that. One and five last season in the weird COVID season, but zero and twelve the year before that. Athens Sports is projecting two and ten, one and seven uh, in the MAC. I'm going to agree with them there. I think they go 2-10, and 1-7. and seven. I think they might be able to snag a win, uh, a surprise win here, the game they probably shouldn't, uh, against Bowling Green. Uh, and I think they can win against Bryant, the FCS team. But they play against Auburn Temple and Ohio State in their non-conference, which is just an incredibly tough non-conference schedule for any team, and especially a team like Akron here who doesn't return their starting quarterback. Uh, has Tom Arth in his second year coming in the team. It's going to be third year of this season. 1-17 so far. Perhaps we're going to see a turnaround. 
you know, the 0-12 and season is not great, but that was his first season kind of trying to institute himself in this team. And then the COVID season really threw things off. He can't, I don't think, be blamed for that. Uh, but I don't think we're going to see a big turnaround here from Akron, who's really kind of been one of the bottom teams in the conference in the MAC uh, of recent years. Bowling Green Falcons, 2-10, and 1-7, and seven, predicted by Athlon Sports. Uh, again, this hasn't been the case in most of my videos, but I'm going to be agreeing with Athlon here. Again, I think it's going to be 2-10, 1-7. and 0-5 uh, last season, 3-9 year before that so really a downhill trend for a team that's really been middle to bottom of the conference for a while now uh they only returned three starters on offense one of the fewest uh starters back on offense of any team in the MAC. Six starters back on defense, which still isn't great compared to I me. Mean, even Akron returns eight starters on defense here. Uh, they they do return their starting quarterback, which is good, which is, uh, I guess, good. You know, you can, can see it as good news for them. He did only throw one touchdown uh, compared to six interceptions last season, so that's not great. Uh, they caught, of course, being Matt McDonald there. We'll have to see if he can step up his game this season with a regular schedule, real practice to get himself under. I think they can grab a snag a win here against Murray State, um, and I think I think they can probably pull off a little bit of an upset for them considering the season I expect them to have against Ohio. But just down the stretch here, very difficult games. Tennessee, South Alabama shouldn't be that hard for most teams, but I think Bowling Green's going to take the loss there and Minnesota before getting into MAC play against Kent State. I think it's just going to be another one of those bottom teams in the MAC here for Bowling Green Falcons. Buffalo Bills, 9 and 4, 6 and 2. Uh, of course, losing their head coach going off. Um, Lance Leopold leaving to go become the head coach at Kansas, accepting that head coaching job. Uh, so new coach this year for Buffalo. Going to have to see that. And that was a last-minute decision. I mean, even Athlon Sports here has Lance Leopold listed as the Buffalo coach. So he's not anymore. He's gone off to Kansas. Um, and I apologize. I'm not entirely sure who took over the coaching reins here at Buffalo. Uh, really something I should have looked up. I didn't realize Athlon Sports hadn't updated it here. Uh, but whoever it is is going to is taking over a pretty good team, a team that went 6-1 last year very competitive blew out a lot of teams here uh 70 to 41 win against kent state 56 win point 56 to 7 win against akron 42 to 17 bowling green 42 to 10 against miami ohio 49 to 30 against northern illinois really looked dominant all the way up into that ball state game where they struggled ended up losing by 10 points there but were able to beat marshall who's a very good team out of conference usa ended up being able to beat marshall 17 to 10 i think that this is a team that is very good uh athlon sports is projecting nine and three six and two mac and again uh, weird coincidence here, but I'm going to end up agreeing with Athlon Sports. I do think it can be 9-3, and 6-2. and uh, Interesting non-conference schedule here. Uh, not super challenging uh, with games against Wagner and Old Dominion, but steps up the difficulty of the games against Nebraska and Coastal Carolina. Uh, I do believe that Buffalo can open the season here 2-0 and with wins against Wagner, and Nebraska looks vulnerable. They, they're, they are on a downward downward trend in that program after not having a great year last year and not the year before that definitely not the historic nebraska teams of past years buffalo only returning five starters on offense but they do have their starting quarterback back who threw for over 1300 yards last year an outstanding job for him i think that buffalo they're going to have to go play at nebraska it will be an upset in terms of a power five win there uh, but i think that they can go get that win now they're going to have to play coastal carolina who had an incredible season last year is actually ranked in the top 25 at number 22 uh, would be a huge coup for, coup for Buffalo if they could pull off a win against Coastal Carolina. Going to be one of the competitors there for the New Year's Six. I think Coastal Carolina is going to get the win here. Just a very tough team to play. Even though it is at home for Buffalo, I think Coastal is going to grab this win. I think uh, Buffalo is going to go on a big winning streak here against a lot of MAC teams. Wins against Western Michigan, Ohio, Akron, Bowling Green, Miami, and Northern Illinois. Now, I do think, and it's not because I think that they are a better team uh, playing against Buffalo here, but I do think that at some point in this season, consistency has been a little bit of an issue in the past, of course, going 8-5 and five in 2019, and I think that Buffalo is not quite as good as that 6-1 and one record that they showed last year. I think they took advantage of a little bit of COVID there, and of course, new head coach coming in here for them. So I do think they're going to drop a couple of games that they probably should win. I think one of the, I'm not sure exactly where it's going to come on the schedule, but just for uh, purposes of putting that digit on there that loss on there i'm going to say kent state has a chance here to pull off that win going to have to play at kent state a team that returns eight starters on offense um and two, including the starting quarterback and running back not a, and we're going to preview them next but i'm going to say not a team that i think is going to do uh great overall but i do think they have a chance to upset buffalo here um if they don't lose to kent state i think they'll drop a game somewhere else one that they probably should win and then at the end of the season, big game against Ball State, a team that a lot of people are thinking it was kind of a fluke season last year, and they're, lot, they're thinking they're not quite as good uh, as they showed. 
I'm not so sure about that. We'll get a preview when we get to them, but I think Ball State's going to be able to pull off a win here, especially having to go play at Ball State. Going to be highly motivated. Uh, could be an interesting determiner there. Might be a chance to play for a conference championship game. Could be on the line. It's going to be an exciting end of the season there before we get into conference championship season and into the bowl season there. So uh, I think another deep, pretty good year overall here for Buffalo. Exciting year, especially for a MAC team. Uh, the coming off of a 6-1 season last year for 8-5 in 2019. So 9 3 6 and 2 I'm pretty excited to see what Buffalo can pull off here, especially with a new head coach. Um, and I'll throw the new head coach's name in the com in the description of this video. I really apologize to any Buffalo to any uh, Buffalo Bull Bills. Sorry, Buffalo Bulls fans. I really apologize to any Buffalo Bulls fans for not having that ready to go. That's on me. All right, Kent State Golden Flashes, 3-1 uh, and one last season. Uh, so pretty decent year, considering they only played four games. They won three of them uh, against Akron, Bowling Green, and Eastern Michigan with a pretty heavy loss to Buffalo. So definitely not the cream of the crop as far as the wins they got last season. 7-6 and six a year before that. I'm going to say they're going to return close to that kind of middle of the pack, bottom of the pack level four that they have done in the past. Athlon Sports is projecting six and six, five and three. I think it's gonna be a little bit worse than that. I think they go five and seven, four and five. Uh, as far as the MAC play there goes, I think they're going to drop that first game to Texas A&M. They'll drop games to Iowa and Maryland. Outstanding non-conference schedule for Kent State here, by the way, but it's going to be very difficult. They can pick up wins against VMI. I predict some wins here uh, along the season. I think they can get wins against Bowling Green, Northern Illinois, Central Michigan, and against Akron. Uh, I do think they're going to be motivated to try and make that 6-6 six and six record. I do think that's possible for them here, but I think they're going to drop that last game to Miami, Ohio for a little bit of a disappointing season for Kent State coming in here. Uh, of course, their head coach coming into his fourth season. They do return a lot of stars on offense, so could be a chance to kind of turn things around, but after having a little bit of a disappointing season last year, I think they're going to be much closer to that um, kind of middle-of-the-pack, lower-end team that they were in 2019. All right, Miami, Ohio, Red Hawks, 2-1 and one last season, only played three games. Uh, again, this was what makes it so hard to analyze teams like these in these conferences uh, because you had teams that basically played almost a full season or at least two-thirds of it, and then you had teams who barely played anything at all, almost didn't matter, was basically like having a couple of scrimmage games before they shut up and had to shut shut down and had to wait for net again for this year. So Ball State, 2-1 last year, 8-6 and six the year before that. I think that that lack of play is really going to hurt them. I think the teams that didn't get as much play as the other teams are going to be affected by that. There's not as much experience on the field and not as much game time experience for sure. Athlon Sports projecting 6-6, six 5-3. And six, and I think it's going to be a little worse than that. I think it's going to be 5-7, and seven, um, four and four Mac play. Uh, I think that they'll drop games here against Cincinnati, Minnesota, and Army in the non-conference. I think they can pick up a win against LIU. I think they can pick up wins against Eastern Michigan, Akron, Bowling Green, and Kent State down the end stretch there. This could be a, a bowl eligible team. They're going to be a, couple, a one or two wins away from that six and six record, but I do think it's going to end up being five and five. They do return their starting quarterback, which is pretty good news for them. Uh, 384 yards and four touchdowns in the three games that he was able to play. So not super impressive numbers by any stretch of the imagination. It'll be interesting to see what Chuck Martin can do to turn things around for this team uh, or potentially face the hot seat if he can't get things running in the right direction. All right, Ohio Bobcats, so the other team in Ohio here for the MAC. 2-1 uh, last season, 7-6 and six year before that. Only played three games there. Athlon Sports projecting seven and five, six and two. I think that lack of playing time is going to hurt them. I think they're going to do a little worse than that. Six and six, five and three is my projection. Dropping games, they have a game against Syracuse, a team that is vulnerable in the ACC, a team that is not very bottom tier in the ACC. Chance to potentially pull off an upset if they're going to do it against a Power Five team. This would be the team to do it against. Probably one of the easier teams to beat, other than Kansas or Vanderbilt or something like that. One of the, so Syracuse kind of in that same level of lower end power five team i do think that however this is going to be a loss for the bobcats here uh wins against duquesne uh, then a loss against Louisiana, who's a very good team this year with a uh, top 25 billet at number 23. Lost to Northwestern. I think that they're going to do pretty good as far as, they're not, as far as their conference play here goes. And then they can go, um, go 
5-1 and one here down the middle of the season stretch with a loss against Buffalo, but wins otherwise against Akron Central, Michigan, Kent State, Miami, Ohio, and Eastern Michigan. I do believe they'll drop the final two games of their season. I think they'll drop a game to Toledo, who looks to be a very good MAC team coming back this year. And I do think that they'll lose a game they probably should win against Bowling Green there, uh, who's mo motivated to just get at least one conference win towards the end of the season. Uh, I do think that's a game they can win. I think they could get that 7-5, and five, but I think that it's going to be a little bit of a disappointing season down the stretch here. Bowling Green coming in and motivated to get that last win. Ohio already bowl eligible and not really playing um, for a back conference championship with the losses that they have to key uh, teams in Buffalo and Toledo there. So I think they are going to be uh, not quite as motivated as, as Miami, Ohio is, uh, sorry, as Bowling Green is to get a win there in the season. So I think Ohio drops that game uh, to finish the season six and six. All right, Ball State Cardinals, winners of the Mount of the MAC last season, and winners against San Jose State in the bowl game. There, uh, a nice win too, thirty-four to thirteen, and this was not a drab San Jose State team by any stretch of the imagination. I, most people are really sleeping on Ball State here. They're thinking that that season last year was a bit of a fluke. If they had been playing well down the beginning of the stretch and then poorly down the end, I would probably agree with that. But the fact that they were able to go out of conference and get a big win against San Jose State there, I believe that they were the only team, uh, only MAC team to play in a non in a bowl game. Uh, if I if my memory serves me right here. Uh, oh, sorry, Buffalo, of course, actually went out and played in a bowl game. So Buffalo and Ball State, the only teams that actually got to go out of conference last season. Ball State had a win against a very good San Jose State team who has one of the top quarterbacks in the uh, group of five there, Nick Starkle, a very good San Jose State Spartans team there. I think that Ball State is actually one of those good, one of those teams out there who's going to surprise a lot of people. Eight stars back on offense, nine stars back on defense. Uh, Mike Neu there has is 22 and 34 over the last five years. So this has been a MAC team, five and seven in 2019. This has been a MAC team that has been down, but they are coming off of a ton of momentum. They're a team that showed that they could overcome the COVID odds. A team that was very disciplined down the stretch here with wins uh, against Central Michigan, Western Michigan, and of course against Buffalo there. Uh, defense kind of held them in just long enough the offense to get those wins. Drew Plitt, I think he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the conference here with over 2,000 yards passing last season and 17 touchdowns to only six interceptions. Non-conference schedule is going to be a little bit tough here with the games against Penn State and Wyoming and Army. I think that they will drop the games to Penn State and Army, win against Western Illinois. Sorry, I forgot to mention that FCS team. Wyoming is a team that's good from Mountain West, who I think is going to be overlooking Ball State. And I think Ball State can get that win. I, I think they're going to have to play at Wyoming in Laramie. I think that Wyoming is probably the better team here. But Ball State, I think, is a very good MAC team who's going to be highly motivated. I think Wyoming might be overlooking that matchup. And I think they can get a win there for a pretty nice non-conference win. Uh, I think that then they'll just win out the rest of the way after that dropping a loss here to Toledo. I think that they're going to go on a nice 6-0 stretch here to be a heavy contender here to again repeat as MAC champions. Central Michigan Chippewas 6-6, six 4-4 and six, four and four is what Athlon Sports is projecting. Uh, a team that went 3-3 three and three last year and 8-6 and six the year before that. So a team that has kind of been able to cement themselves as a middle-of-the-pack MAC team, being competitive. Uh, with, they had losses to Ball State and Toledo, tough teams to play against there towards the end of the stretch, uh, but, but, and they lost to Western Michigan, but managed to pull off win against Northern Illinois, which is pretty nice there, and Ohio and Eastern Michigan. I think that it's going to be slightly worse than that 6-6 six and six rating. I think it's probably going to be 5-7, and 3-5. And they don't return... Uh, they Sorry, they do return over 20 starters overall on offense and defense. 10 for offense and 10 for defense. It's going to be a team returning a ton of talent. Uh, but also a team that I think is going to... They play a tough non-conference schedule here. Uh, at least, Sorry, with games against... Yes, tough non-conference schedule with games against Missouri and LSU. Both of those are going to be losses. Uh, they can pull off some wins here against Robert Morris and FIU. Not Shouldn't be too much of a challenge there. But, Ohio, but Toledo looks to be very good. Ball State looks to be very good. And I think that Central Michigan is still... A few seasons away from being able to capture some consistency there as a team overall. I think they'll drop a couple of games that they should win uh, just in this kind of return to regular format here for the season. Um, I'm going to say those those losses are going to come against Ohio and Kent State, but they could e just as easily come against uh, Miami, Ohio, Northern Illinois, uh, or Eastern Michigan. So a little bit of a disappointing season, I think, for Central Michigan in the cards here, especially after uh, their quarterback was only able to throw for four touchdowns last season, uh, though their running back was able to rush for over 500 yards, which was a nice job 
by him. But this is a team that I think, even though they returned a ton of starters, is not necessarily a team that was that great last year. We'll have to see if those starters take a step forward, but I think it's probably going to be a little bit of a disappointing season there for the Chippewas. Eastern Michigan Eagles uh, projected 6-6, six 3-5, and six, three and five, a team that went 2-4 and four last season and 6-7 and seven the year before that. So definitely a team that's been, um, a, well, a downward trend after last season and not that great in 2019. 6-6, uh, six and 3-5 six, and five is what Athlon Sports is projecting. I think it's probably going to be a little worse than that. 5-7, and 2-6. and six. Uh, They do return nine starters on offense, but lose uh, their starting running back there, which I think is going to hurt them. They do uh, play a pretty easy non-conference schedule besides the game against Wisconsin. They can pick up some wins here against St. Francis, UMass, and Texas State. Shouldn't be too much of a challenge for them there. Um, I think they can grab their first MAC game, their first uh, conference game here. I think they can grab a win against Northern Illinois. But I think it's going to be a pretty uh, heavy road to travel down the last few stretch games here. Uh, with losses, in my prediction, against Miami, Ohio, Ball State, Toledo, Ohio, Western Michigan, and Central Michigan. Uh, pulling off a win against Bowling Green, and if they can pull off one more win down the stretch, they're going to be highly motivated too because it would get them bowl eligible. I could definitely see them going 6-6, six and six, but just the way that I'm stacking up the wins and losses in this column, I don't think it's going to end up happening. But we'll see. I hope that uh, the Eagles here are able to surprise me, uh, and we'll see what ends up happening. Northern Illinois, a team that went 0-6 last season and 5-7 and seven the year before that. Nowhere near the level of the Northern Illinois teams in the past. That were The Northern Illinois team, of course, memorably, going out and with playing in that uh, New Year's Six game a few years back. Well, not that many years back. Um, every year they uh, gets further and further away, but it still seems like yesterday to me <laughs> with the way uh, things are going. But three and nine, two and six is being projected here by Athlon Sports. I'm going to say that's probably correct. I think three and nine, two and six is fair. They lose their starting quarterback. This was a team that was not very good last season and not good at all in 2019. Uh, tough non-conference schedule with games against Georgia Tech, Wyoming, and Michigan. I think those will all be losses. Though Georgia Tech is the most vulnerable of those teams. Uh, game against Maine, FCS team should be a win. And I think they can pull off wins against Bowling Green and Kent State, but losses across the board. Otherwise, uh, we'll just have to see. Thomas Hammock coming into his third year has been a pretty a disappointment here for the Huskies, who are used to having a decently high level of success and being one of the top teams in the MAC. Uh, we'll have to see if either he can pull it around, Hammock there being able to pull it around, uh, going forward, or if a change of coaching staff is necessary to bring Northern Illinois back to being one of those top teams in the MAC that can compete for near six games. All right, that brings us to Toledo Rockets. Toledo Rockets, six and six in 2019. Uh, Jason Candle, th 38 and 21 over five years. A team that went four and two last season with losses against Western Michigan and Ball State. This is a team that returns 11 starters on offense. 11 of them. <laughs> 11 starters on offense. They do lose their starting quarterback there. Um, and they do lose on defense. They do lose a starting defensive end and, uh, and, and a down lineman there. But overall, they bring back 10 players on defense and 11 players on offense. They had multiple players in the offensive line that got starts. That's how they get that number there for 11 back on offense. It's going to have to see what happens with the new quarterback that gets brought in. Uh, projected here as Carter Bradley, the sophomore player who had 849 yards passing last season. So a very good year um, for them last season. A player who is highly experienced there for Toledo. So a lot of starting experience across the board. I think this is going to be... and uh, The reason I'm slowing down here is because I'm going out on a limb here for Toledo. Athlon Sports is rejecting eight and five, five and three MAC conference. I think that it's going to be a very good season for Toledo with the amount of stars they have back, the type of team that Toledo has been in the past with a very explosive offense, and the fact that their running back who had over 500 yards rushing is back, and Carter Bradley, who had an excellent season last year, uh, even though he's not the returning starter per se, uh, Athlon Sports highlights the teams, the players on each team with the high, with the uh, which is a returning starter, and they don't list him as a returning starter there. Um, so not necessarily a returning starter there, but a team who had a couple. Carter Bradley made a couple starts in 2020 uh, to back to uh, battle with Tucker Glean and Dequan Finn and Gavin Hall for the starting nod. Uh, Bradley threw for career high 432 yards against Central Michigan last season. So there's the explanation there. Of course, all you Rockets fans already knew that, but I needed a little bit of a refresher. I think that he is a good quarterback who's shown prowess. I think that this is a team that is returning a lot of players on offense and defense and a team that plays a pretty easy non-conference schedule 
and a decently across the board easy schedule here within the MAC, uh, not having to uh, play some of the more difficult teams here. I think that Toledo can go 11 and 1, 8 and 0. Oh. I think that wins against Norfolk State, Colorado State, and UMass are definitely in the cards. That Colorado State game might be a little more challenging than is projected, but Colorado State is going to be a down team in the Mountain West this year. They're going to be bottom of the conference, so I don't think that should be too much of a challenge. They will drop that game to Notre Dame. I don't think that there's they're at the level of being able to beat them. But they play a very easy schedule here. Um, Ball State is going to be a challenge. That's going to be the determiner. That's where I could see a loss coming. But with games against Northern Illinois, Central Michigan, Western Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Bowling Green, Ohio, and Akron, I just don't see any conference losses here besides Ball State. I don't necessarily think that this is a team worthy of an 11-1 record. Even though they have so many players back, they haven't shown that those players are necessarily at the level of being worthy of that 11-1 record. But I just don't see where the losses are going to come in. So I think that this is a Toledo Rockets team that's going to drop a game into Notre Dame and then have an exciting season for Rockets fans down the stretch. And maybe by the end of the season, there'll be a team that has gotten to, has gotten to a level, has become good enough to be worthy of that 11-1 record that can go out um, in some kind of bowl game matchup, maybe a really good bowl game matchup uh hang around make sure you like and subscribe i'm going to be putting out a video here once i'm done my series talking about the teams that are contending for the new year six i'm giving my projection there for which team i think will win the, or get to the new year six bowl bid so this could be a team that is playing for something very special and maybe by the end of the season they'll gotten to a point where they can go out there play in a mac championship game and then go out on the national stage and play competently We'll see, but like I said, super easy schedule besides that game against Ball State. That's going to be the real challenger for this team. Other than that, I think they have a team that can go 11-1, 8-0. Uh, I'm kind of pushing up against my time. i got one more team here, so I'm going to go through them real quick. Western Michigan Broncos, 3-3 three and three last season, 7-6 and six the year before that. So a team that's been uh, on a little bit of a downhill slope uh, compared to uh, Western Michigan teams in the past. Projected 6-6, six 5-3 and six, five and three by Athlon Sports. I think that's fair, 6-6, six 5-3. and, six, five and three. Eight players back on offense. Um, they do return their starting quarterback, so that's always good news for a team. Uh, threw for over 1,700 yards last year. I do think they'll drop a couple games here in the non-conference against Michigan, Pittsburgh, and San Jose State. I think those will all be losses. San Jose State, of course, being a great uh, Mountain West team, I think, again, this season. I think that they will be able to beat Illinois State, FCS team, and then I think they can pull off some wins here against Kent State, Central Michigan, Akron, Eastern Michigan, and Northern Illinois, uh, which is going to be great news for them after dropping two games against Buffalo and Ball State here at the beginning of the season, uh, at least beginning of the non-conference slate, sorry, beginning of the conference slate, and dropping a game to Toledo. Ending the season on a 4-0 run there to get bowl eligible, I think that the Broncos are going to be coming in with a lot of momentum coming into a bowl game. Mac has traditionally performed decently well in bowl games. Uh, in the past, and so I'm going to be excited to see what Western Michigan can do. Uh, always excited to watch them. Have seen them play on the blue before. Uh, of course, getting to go play in that Idaho Potato Bowl um, up on the blue and uh, up on the blue. <laughs> I'll be excited to see what they can do finishing down the stretch. I think this is a team uh, that's going to have a pretty exciting end of the season after looking like they might not go bowl eligible there during the middle half of it. So six and six, five and three. Uh, pretty, the de pretty decent year for Western Michigan as they again become one of those middle teams in the MAC as they try to get back to a team that can compete for MAC championship games. All right, so where does this leave us overall? Where does this kind of put predicted order of finish here? Uh, Buffalo, this is what Athlon Sports is projecting. Buffalo number one, Ohio number two, Kent State number three, Miami number four, Akron number five, and Buffalo Green number six. Uh, I'm going to agree with that all the way down the stretch, uh, at least for the East Division here. One, two, three, uh, sorry, one, two, uh, for Buffalo and Ohio, the one change I am going to be making is I think Miami, Ohio will finish number three, but then Kent State number four, is Akron number five, and Bowling Green number six. Now in the West Division, I think it's going to be very competitive. I think there's going to be a lot of close games here. There's going to be a real determiner on which team's going to get that slot to represent the West Division of the MAC. Uh, Athlon Sports is projecting Toledo number one, Ball State number two, Western Michigan number four. Four, three, sorry, Central Michigan number four, Eastern Michigan number five, and Northern Illinois number six. I think that Toledo is going to, even though this is a ball state, ball state team that I think is going to be coming back with a lot of talent and can definitely go out there and beat that Toledo Rockets team, I think that this is a Toledo Rockets team that we've seen in the past be highly motivated to win games. I think that this is a team that's going to be coming in uh, with another chance to have another exciting season, especially after a decently pretty good non-conference slate there other than that loss to Notre Dame. I think that 
uh, Toledo will hold the win against Ball State to keep them at number one. Really, whoever wins that Toledo Ball State game, I think, is going to be the winner of the West Division here. So I'm going to agree with uh, number one slot for Toledo, number two slot for uh, Ball State, number three for Western Michigan, number four for Central Michigan. The one change I'm going to make, I'll, I'm going to move Northern Illinois to five and Eastern Michigan move to six. So... Athlon Sports is projecting Buffalo over Toledo in the MAC championship game. Now, while Buffalo, I think, may end up being the better team here, I think that it's going to be Toledo over Buffalo in the MAC championship game. The reason I think that is I think Toledo is going to be coming in with a lot of uh, momentum, and I think they're going to be in a position to play for something big, which is going to, of course, impact how they then play in that championship game. They're going to be more motivated to win this game. I think Toledo, like I said, going to be coming in with an 11-1 record. Buffalo, 9-3. Buffalo, I don't don't believe to be a contender for that New Year's Six game, but Toledo just might be. So the way, how that game ends up going out might end up being determined really by outside factors. If Toledo's in a spot where they're in the contention, in the conversation for that New Year's Six game, they might end up being a team that wins this game. Um, if, they're, if they're out of it, if they're too far down the rankings that they don't have a shot, Buffalo might have a chance of coming in and getting this win. But I really think Toledo's going to be playing for something special. Make sure, again, uh, Mac fans in general, but especially Rockets fans, that you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that video where I discuss uh, potential path to New Year's Six here for a group of five teams. So that concludes my video. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, like I said, make sure you like and subscribe. It's not all Boise State Conference. Uh, Boise State content. I do do other... Um, sorry. I do make other... Uh, football content throughout the season uh, relating to college football as a whole. Uh, so thank you for listening to me as always and go big blue.